Well, good morning and welcome to St Stephen's Ealing for our weekly online service. It's good to have you with us, whether you are a regular member of our church or you're visiting us for the first time today. My name is Steve Newbold and I am the vicar here. Over the summer, we've been looking at some important, but perhaps less well-known Bible characters. And today we're going to be thinking about Hannah. Uh, in a little while, we're going to watch an animated version of the Bible account of Hannah, and then Enid Barron will be speaking to us. This has been an exciting week in the life of our church. We've welcomed a new member of staff as Beth Skelton has joined us as our youth pastor. And a little bit later on, she will be introduced to us. First of all, the Tates are going to lead us in sung worship, but I'm gonna pray as we begin. Father God, we thank you for the summer. We thank you for all that you give us. We thank you for all that we have enjoyed together. We ask today that you would speak to us, speak to us through your word, speak to us as we worship you in song and lead us deeper into your presence in jesus name amen one two one two
worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, a name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes. Good morning everyone. It's my pleasure today to introduce you to someone really special that is our new youth pastor, Beth Skelton. Hello Beth. Can you tell us please um, where you've been? Where did you come from and where were you working before you started with us? Yeah, great. I was from um, Rotherham, which is a town near Sheffield in South Yorkshire. And um, for the past two years, I've been interning in a church in Sale um, near Manchester um, called St. Mary's. And um, 
through lockdown I've been heading up their youth ministry because the youth pastor there just left um, and been dealing with the challenges of Zoom um, which I'm sure you all know of. <laughs> yeah and so now you're at St Stephen's what are you looking forward to about working here? Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to getting to know our young people that you guys have already been working with um, and seeing them flourish um, in their journey with God um, and those who are exploring just um, to discover God even more um, and getting to know you guys as a church family as well, which is really exciting. Um, and just this new adventure with God and uh, journeying with him. Brilliant. Well, let's just pray for Beth now. Heavenly Father, thank you for Beth. Thank you that she's answered the call to come and work here in Ealing at St Stephen's. Lord, please help her, give her every gift she needs to fulfil this ministry and help us to be encouraging to her and supportive of her. I pray that you'd use her, Lord, to bring young people to faith and for those who know you to grow in faith. Please bless her, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Slapstick Theatre. Hannah and God. This is Hannah. Hi. Hannah was married to a man named Elkanah. Hey. But they were not able to have any children. This made Hannah sad. Aw. It's okay. Come on. Every year, Hannah and Elkanah would go to the house of the Lord at Shiloh to pray to God and offer sacrifices. Hannah would cry out and pray to the Lord. She told God that if he gave her a son, she would give him back to him and that her son would serve God all the days of his life. <laughs> Hannah was so upset that one of the priests, Eli, thought there was something off about her. Uh... But Hannah told him that she had been praying because she had a broken heart. <laughs> Eli told her, may the God of Israel grant the request you've made. Thank you. And then Hannah was no longer sad. In due time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Yeah! She named him Samuel for she said, I asked the Lord for him. Hannah did as she said she would, and once Samuel was a little older, she took him to the temple. Hannah prayed and gave thanks to God, and Samuel grew up in the temple serving the Lord. Good morning. I wonder what you made of the film clip we've just seen. If you've been attending St. Stephen's online services for the last few weeks, you know that we're thinking about some of the less well-known characters in the Bible, and this week it's the turn of Hannah. She's a woman who is greatly admired for her strong faith. Now, the first part of the film shows that Hannah is desperately unhappy. She's married to a man called Elkanah who loves her very much, but she's heartbroken because she can't have a child of her own. Now we all know it's very sad for any woman who wants a child and can't have that child. But I think in Hannah's time it was perhaps made even worse because really people looked down on you if you couldn't have a child and they thought you'd done something wrong and you were being punished for your sins. Worse still for Hannah was that Elkanah had another wife called Panina and Panina had lots of children and she loved to gloat over Hannah and torment her because she was childless. Each year, as we saw in the film, Elkanah took Hannah, Panina and the rest of the family to a special place to worship God in Shiloh under the priest Eli. In the film, we see Hannah in floods of tears and my goodness, they were pretty dramatic tears, weren't they? as she prays passionately to God for the child she so longs for. And Eli the priest sees her and says that she will get what she wants. I wonder if you've ever really longed desperately for something and it's really made you miserable because you can't have it. 
I thought back to something in my childhood, which probably seems pretty trivial now, but I remember I desperately wanted a pony of my own. My friends had ponies, I loved riding, but my parents would not get me a pony. I was so upset about it. I decided to try and earn enough money myself to buy a pony. So strange child that I was at the age of 11, I decided to grow mushrooms and to sell them to the neighbours to make money. I even arranged for a load of horse manure to be delivered to our back garden to make the mushroom bed. My parents were very tolerant. But with two pounds profit, I never got the pony. This is probably a rather silly example, but I think it helps to highlight a couple of points from Hannah's story. First, Hannah turns to God, trusting in him in faith to ask for what she really wants. Unlike the child Enid who tried asking her parents or getting what she wanted through her own effort. Second, she makes a promise to do something for God if he grants her request. She says that she will give him the child she has to serve him. Hannah did indeed have a son and called him Samuel and she kept her promise. When the child was just a few years old, she took him back to Shiloh to serve God in God's special place there under the guidance of Eli. And I think it seems that Hannah's requests were very much in line with God's will. We read that the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature and in favour with the Lord and with men. These words are very reminiscent or um, a prequel really to something we read about the boy Jesus a thousand years later, just after he's gone missing in the temple for a few days. We read that Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in faith of, with God and men. Samuel did indeed become a great man of faith and served God. He became a prophet. He was a leader in Israel. And then he anointed Israel's first two kings, first Saul and then King David. Hannah kept her promise. I don't think if I'd got a pony, I'd ever thought of offering to use that pony to serve God. One thing else about Anna is she did remember to thank God. There's some lovely words in the book of Samuel, the words of the song that Hannah sang. And these words are very much like the words Mary sang a thousand years later to give thanks that she was going to bear the boy Jesus. So often we want things, we ask God, but we forget to say thank you. Now there are aspects of Hannah's story which I think we might find a little curious today. Not least, I have to say as a mother, the idea of giving away a small child that you have longed for. But there are definitely things we can learn from Hannah. One is to turn to God in faith and in prayer, to trust in him for what we really need. Second, it's to play our part. Not just to pray to God to grant our wishes, but she used those things which he blesses us with to serve him and to serve others. Let's just take a simple example. If we're blessed with enough money to buy all the food we need, do we think about using this, some of it, to help provide food for those who are really struggling in need? Or maybe God's blessed us with a talent. It might be the talent of macing music. Or perhaps something as simple as being a good listener which we can use to the benefit of others as we listen to their troubles and let them pour out their hearts to us. So all that we have from God, we should use to serve him. If you're like me, your prayers will probably be full of asking God for things, a bit like a shopping list, things for yourself and things for other people. But we do need to check that our prayers also include thanks to God, both in answering the prayers, giving us the things we ask for, but also the blessings that he showers on us for things we've not even asked for. 
Hannah's faith brought what she wanted, and indeed much more, because she was blessed with another five children after Samuel had been born. So let's remember what we can learn from Hannah. To turn to God in faith with our prayers and requests. To use what he blesses us with to serve him and not to forget to say thank you. So let us take a short time to pray. Heavenly Father, inspire us to be people who turn to you in faith with our requests and with our worries. To trust in you. We for thank you for the many ways in which you bless us. Help us to accept your will graciously at those times when our prayers are not answered in the ways we had hoped for. And lead us to be people who use all that you have given us to serve you and our neighbours and to work for your kingdom. Amen. And let's join together to say the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen.
Well, thank you to all who have taken part in today's service and thank you to you for joining us here online. If you're able after the service to join us for our coffee and catch up on Zoom, we'd love to see you and spend some time chatting with you. We'll be back here next Sunday for St Stephen's Online at 11am. There's other things going on uh, which are all listed on the church website. So do have a look and we would love to meet with you at any of those gatherings. So as we finish, a prayer of blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this week and always. Amen.